Hey guys, it's Mei Mei and welcome back to As Many As Cards using the Salutations number two, part two. This is part two. Now let me tell you what, we're getting a lot done in part two. We are going to make the rest of our cards and we're going to make the boxes that go in and I think this is only going to be a two-part video. Now I want to tell you something, a couple things real quick. Thank you so much for your kind words about part one. You guys were incredible. Tell me how much you enjoy it. Secondly, this is a partner project. This, these salutation packs are huge, okay? You're going to make a lot of cards. So if you ever want to sit down with your friends and craft, this is a great one to do that with because you kind of can do the same thing and accomplish a lot, okay? So I wanted to point that out. Let's talk about what we're going to do now. We left off finishing, for the most part, these cards. Remember, this was the stand-up easel card. We finished that one, and we finished this one, except for the fact that I went back and did embossing on this flap. So at the end of the video, I'll show you those all done. But what I wanna show you really quick, something I didn't hit on in that last video was using stickers. Breaking in here to ask you to hit that red subscribe button. It's free. Also hit the bell button beside it. You can help me reach my big goal this year of 400,000 subscribers. Okay, back to crafting. Okay, so you remember how I told you when we did all our dissecting that we had these pieces that were blanks? Now, you can leave them as blanks, and you can use them for future cards based on what you need when you need it, or you can take your, your sticker pages, and you can find a sticker to go here. Let's, let me show you what I'm talking about. So, for example, this little piece here is really, really pretty, and like I said, you could leave it blank, but I'm going to use a sticker. I'm going to put a little hello from me to you in there, and notice I'm not using something round. You don't have to. You can play around with shapes, and then you'll stick this in the center, and it will turn this into a little sentiment for you, okay? You don't have to do this. You can do anything you want. Now you'll take this little guy, and you're going to glue him to the mat that belongs to him. And remember, I show, if, let me say this. I showed you how to do these cards in part one. So if you want to see all of the information about these in part one, I also want to remind you that we have an extensive blog post being made for you guys with measures and everything that you need to know. So you can check all that out there. Now I made this little sentiment. Now we'll tell you these easel cards, they were quite the challenge. And the reason is when you're gonna pop this up using a sentiment like we are, you gotta find a sentiment that goes with everything on those little cut aparts, right? So this one's saying a little hello from me to you. May you find moments that make you smile today. So we thought this would be a cute one for it. And then we're gonna put our mats onto our base. So I'll do this and assemble it and then we'll move on to our next card. Okay, now if you saw part one, you'll know there were four cards we were making. This is the third one. This one is called Mounted Mini Card, okay? So don't worry, we're gonna have all these measurements for you in the blog post, but I wanna show you what you'll need to put this one together. So you're gonna need your card base. This is just a four and a quarter by five and a half single piece, and I use some thick cardstock here. This is Nina cover stock. This is not, not your mama's, but that would work too, a nice thick card stock. So use that there. Then this piece is going to live right on top of that, just a little decorator piece. This turns out to be a really cute card. Like I really like the way this one um, turns out. So, and super easy to do and gives you lots of space for your sentiment on the back. So there's that piece. Now what you want to do, we've got our cut apart. Okay. This piece here is going to be your little front flap card. So what you do, I did not, I'm using kind of a thin paper. This is that Botanicals from Sizzix. So I didn't score this. It doesn't really need it, but I did crease it. We have stuff everywhere. Shannon just grabbed that in time for me to get it. We have stuff everywhere. So I did crease it down. Then this guy's going to live here, but before I put it there, I'm going to put all my pieces on. So check this out. My pretty piece is going to go on the front. Now this will need a sticker, so we'll put a sticker on it. Don't forget at the end of the video, I'm going to walk you through our cards and show you all. Well, I won't go through every one. I'll show you a, like a handful of our favorites. And then there's that. And then you also need a place for your inside sentiment. So that's what this little guy is for. And he just lives right on the inside. I think this would be cute. Since you have the back to write on, it'd be cute to put a picture in here. Like the family, like if you're making this for a Christmas card and you like to send out family pictures at Christmas, it'd be cute to do something Christmas here and then have that inside, that'd be cute. All right, and then our base, and this just glues to the middle. It's a cute card. I think this is my favorite of all we've done. I don't know, this one and one other. Wait till you see another one. It's cute too. 
All right, and then this just gets mounted center, center. Look at that. Let's put a sticker on the front. Let's give it a little sentiment. All right, so I'm gonna use this one here. And again, you don't have to worry about the shape. You can play with that. I'm gonna put this here and I think I'll put it on an angle so it'll really show. You could pop this up on some foam if you wanted to, but you know how I feel about thicknesses. This is a pretty thick card as it is by the time we get it done. But isn't that cute? Here's what I love too, leave this blank, okay? We stamped on all those others, but we're leaving this blank so we can send this to whoever we want and write whatever we want. So there's that one. All right, let's make another one. Now we're gonna make what's called the cutaway card. This is what we call them, the cutaway front five by sevens. So this information will be on the blog and I wanna show you how you assemble once you get your cuts, okay? So with this one, what I love is we're making a five by seven, but we're only using one base piece that is five by seven. So that's good, right? To make it the cutaway, the way we wanna do it, we did this piece at seven and a half inches, okay? Seven and a half inches by two and a half. And you can see here that I scored this end. You'll score those at half an inch and fold them and crease them super tight. We're doing this because I don't have 14 inch long paper, okay? If I had 14 inch long paper, I would just cut it away from here and fold this over. But since I don't, I'm doing this to give myself this flap. Now, this project takes a lot of paper, the way we're, what we've done. If it didn't take a lot of paper, if I already wasn't having to use so much paper and do so many cuts, I would also put a pretty little decorative piece on here you know, this one's gonna open like this, by the way, because these are portrait. I would put another little decorative piece here, but I didn't. I need to save a little paper because we have really used a lot. So this piece here will hold our little focal piece like so, and it gets glued only on half. You'll see what I'm talking about. Let's glue this one down. This is my favorite card. And I, like I said, I think adding one other piece would be really, really pretty, but listen, don't feel bad if you don't. It's a, these, I told you before, this is not a paper saver project. We used a lot of paper making all these, but we're making a lot of cards. So when you glue this down, you only want to glue it to this half, right? Now, I want to tell you something. If you wanted this to flap this way, you totally could do that by just cutting this piece um, seven and a half wide. Yeah, it'd be seven and a half wide and then scored at two and a half inches and it would flap this way. You see what I'm saying? But I wanted mine to flap up. So that's what we're doing here, okay? So think outside the box, do whatever you want. I like this idea. I like adding that little piece to the top. And then you just center this. This is so pretty. Look how pretty that is. You just center this like this. And then this opens. So when the recipient gets it, it's just different. It's just a little different. It opens like that. And then you wanna put your sentiment spot right here. So that's what this piece is for. just like this. Now, one cool thing, you're gonna have about a half an inch all the way around. And because of where we glued this piece down, it literally is half an inch to kind of help you at the top. So it kind of helps you get it centered. And all you're really trying to do is make sure that your panel here hides your sentiment piece in the back. I just like that at the top. And I think there's a lot we could do with this kind of style. And it's a nice big five by seven. So that's how we did those. Now, let me show you how we do the next one. Our next card, which we wrote out like this, is our cutaway front, but this one goes landscape. It is done exactly the same, okay? Except when you, when you glue this guy on, you glue it this way. So you see we have our white base in here, just like before, and we glued this one this way. So it's done literally the same. Same little glue down here, but you get two different styles of cards. Sort of, you're getting to use both of your cut aparts with this one. So there's your other five by seven. Now for my favorite part of this project. No joke, this is my favorite part. You know, we're giving these away to you guys. And I want to mention something. Somebody said I should give them to the ministry. And, and that's a wonderful idea. But I kind of am doing that anyway. Because I don't, I don't know if you know about our card ministry. What we do is we collect cards from you guys that make a lot of cards, but don't have a lot of people to send them to. And then we send them to other folks that will mail them out. So by me giving away these card boxes that I'm making in this video, I'm really doing the same thing. I'm sending them to people hoping that they will mail them out, which is exactly what we do in our ministry. So here's something that I want to mention. Shannon said this, it's a good idea. If you're not a person that's going to mail the cards out, consider not entering the giveaway. So that way, when you get them, you will mail them out. And if you're not a person who mails them out, consider entering the giveaway so you can start mailing out cards because that would be fun too. Let's make the box. This is so fun. 
So PhotoPlay has made this so easy, this card box. Look what you get inside of here. In this kit, you get the card box itself plus three card bases, A2 card bases, and three envelopes. I'm gonna put those aside for now because we're gonna work on this. Look at the instructions, so well laid out for you. And also, you get these templates and I'm gonna show you how to use these templates. There's a little bit of a trick, okay? So let's start putting our box together. Now this will be like the fifth one we put together, so I should know what I'm doing at this point. All right, do you see this little frilly edge at the top? When you're following photo plays instructions, they show you to lay it this way facing you, okay? And then you wanna start by folding all your horizontal folds, all right? So I'm gonna fold this one and I wanna caution you here. When you fold this, check that your score lines continue. That's important. If they don't, you could get a little crooked box when you're done. So just square it up before you crease it. So we're just gonna do the horizontal lines first. And this one was already folded in the packaging, so it makes it real easy to do. Just again, check and make sure you're nice and square. All right, I'm gonna turn it this way so I can get to this one. Crease it nice and tight. The weight of this box is so nice. This cardstock is really, really nice. So all of these first, that's what you wanna do first, okay? Then they want you to fold your sides in and crease them down. But I wanna caution you about something. Do you see how this one is square here? That's good. When you go to fold this one over, you can line it up with that score line, make sure it's nice and square, and crease it down. This will help you keep your box good and square. But can you tell, and it might be hard to tell on this one, but there's a slight angle here and then a curve here, obviously. You're not going to be able to line this one up the same. You're going to need that free edge, that little angled edge. That is so when we go to assemble our lid, we have a little wiggle room to square up, okay? Just like when we're making boxes ourselves. So just when you're doing this, you can square up the top one, but on that second one, you've just got to fold it straight over and do your best to get it straight, but it won't line up. And I'm warning you this because I'm a person who will retrain paper. So when I first folded this, I took this and moved it to that score line and retrained it. Don't do that. I'm giving you a caution. All right, here, just fold it over and crease it. I'm gonna do that on both sides. And then I wanna show you one more place where you kinda have to have a little bit of caution again on this next little flap. All right, you can see, angle, angle. So don't try to retrain your paper. Just fold this straight over and crease it. And then fold this one straight over and crease it. Now I'm making this seem like a lot of work, but I just had all those little cautionary things I wanted to show you because I messed up on them and I didn't want you to. All right, one more. Now, something that PhotoPlay does for you in this card box, which is super cool, is they give you the box sizes, the cut panel sizes. Now there's a couple of things they don't give you, which we're gonna give you, okay? It'll be in the blog post. I'm not gonna write them all here. It will be in the blog post, but I do wanna show you this. Where this says side panel, two inch by five and three quarters, you're gonna need two of those. And where this says lid side panel, you're gonna need two of those. It's important that you know both of your side panels, you need two. Also, I went through, if you don't wanna wait on my blog post or look for it, all I did was change these measurements down a quarter of an inch because I wanted a little white border around all of my pieces. If you want to cover it solid, just use these measures, but make sure you make two of this one and two of this one. All right, if you don't check my blog post, you can use those. Now we have all our stuff folded in. I'm going to flip this over and put my paper on um, before I fold this box. It is much easier this way, trust me. Okay, let's start. Where do I like to start? I start with this biggest piece first, and here's my big piece, so I'm gonna add glue to it, and I'm just gonna place it. And you'll see here what I mean by giving myself that little white edge. Do you see it doesn't go quite to the score line? That's what I cut the measures down for. So I'm gonna put one here, let's do this one. If you wanna ink, if you wanted to add any other kind of embellishments like that, you'll wanna do that here before you fold the box. Any, any kind of decorating like that is best to do while it's flat. Now, the only other piece that I can add, actually, that's it. No, we can add another one. There's some fancy footwork you have to do here, here, and here. These guys we can do, okay? You still have to do a little fancy footwork on them, but we can lay those down now. What you wanna do, do not glue this, okay? Come to this side flap and put the glue here. 
Now, if you're reading the instructions, you're going to say to me, you've messed up. You're doing something you shouldn't. I altered this a little bit, okay, from their instructions. I will tell you why, and I'll show you how. And you don't have to do what I'm doing. You can follow their instructions exactly, but I needed to alter them a little bit because I didn't think it laid out as like I wanted it to. All right, so I've glued that one down. I'm going to glue this one down. Again, I'm going to put my glue here making sure I remember that this piece doesn't go all the way to the edge because this is a matted piece I'm putting down and place it. One thing I want to show you here, another caution, I feel like I'm just warning, warning, warning. When you place this one, make sure your cardstock goes all the way to that edge. If you don't, you'll have a little strange off cut. You don't want that. All right, let's trim these guys up. So I'm going to flip this over so I can see where I need to trim really easy. And this side is super easy to do. Take your long shears. This is where you want these long shears. It makes this easy, okay? Cut that piece away. The other side's a little trickier, but let me show you what I do. I just take this front piece here and turn it to the back and then make sure I fold those down in my hand. Now I can get to this the same. If you try to go from the other angle, it's a little harder. So there we go. Got that one done. And we lay this back out. Ta-da. Now let's do the fancy footwork. In your instructions from Photoplay, they give you the lid side panel. They give you this box side panel for that angle, but I don't think we really need that. And if you'll notice here, they give you this little piece. This is the front of the box. This is the box lid, and we'll get to that in a second. I want to caution you. I've been here, so, you know, do what I say do, right? When you're cutting out this little pattern, or this little template, Cut it right here. You're going to need this paper when we get to this part, okay? So try not to, I went willy-nilly and just kind of cut these all off and did not give myself that extra piece, and it mattered. So do you see how much thickness I've left here at the top? You're going to need that in a few minutes. With this guy, trim him out. By the way, no, you should not use these scissors. You should use fussy cutting scissors. Maybe not so much for cutting out the template, but when you get to your actual finished piece, because these are serrated, you don't want to leave those little teeth marks in. Okay, let me slide this up for just a second. Let me get it where we can see. Here's where we're working. Now, here's a flaw for me. It's not a flaw, but it's kind of, it's kind of a pain. So, this guy is cut. We're working right here, by the way. This guy is cut exactly the size of this piece. Let me show you what I mean. Do you see that? It's exactly the size, and I don't want exactly the size. I want it to mat. So let me show you what I did. I cut this piece using the measurement they told me to, and I laid it down. And what I'm paying attention to here is this side and this side. That's really what I'm paying attention to, okay? Then I took my template, and I laid it down. But I'm going to lay it down, and if, you'll, if you can see this, I don't know if you can or not, I'm going to lay it down just where I want this to be. Let me point this out to you. See, I want to have that white edge, so I'm just kind of sinking it down a little bit to get that white edge. Then I'm going to trace that. So I've got a pencil here, and I'm going to trace that out. And it doesn't do what you think it's going to do. You're not cutting the whole piece. You're only really cutting that little section. Do you see that? Let's cut that out real quick. Then this piece is going to become my template for the other side. You guessed it. I need to caution you about something else. I'm just saying it because I don't want you to jump ahead at me and mess up. I want you to know all the little things. All right, so when we come to the other side, you see this one fits here, but if we don't do exactly right, look, we won't have the right paper, right? So you're going to take your piece for the other side, and you want to put these right sides together. There's your caution. If you put them right sides together, they're going to work. I'm going to trim this out just by holding it. You could totally just trace that again but I'm just going to do it this way. And you might think, well, this is, that's a lot of little hand cuts. You're going to see that when this box is finished, you do not notice any imperfections in your little cuts. All right, let us glue these on. So I'm just going to add some glue here. One thing I really like is you're really able to put this guy together. Did I do that wrong? Oh, it's this side. I did it wrong. You're really able to put all these pieces down before you put it together. And that really does help. It really, because trying to do this in the air is a whole different ball game. Place this little guy down. All right, guess what? More fancy footwork. Let me show you what you do. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut this up, cut this off here. Okay. Move this aside. 
And I'm going to cut this off here. Now, if you still need those measurements, pay attention. I'm done with them. So I'm going to move that off. And now I'm going to cut this piece. Okay. Now, let me tell you why you're having to do this fancy footwork, okay? I wanted the matte edge. Photo play is giving you the full size measurement. So if you're using the full size measurement, you would just put this guy onto your page, trace the little end and it would fit. But I'm wanting that little white border. So here's what I'm doing. I'm placing this piece and I'm paying attention to three sides, here, here, and here, okay? Then I'm gonna take this guy and place it down, but I'm gonna place it where it would be. So see how I've gone up a little bit here and I've gone up a little bit here? And then I'm gonna trace that. So you can run this from score line to score line, move it up a little bit, trace this out, just like this, and then cut that out and it will fit. If you're making multiples of these boxes, we learned something. It's best to do all this part and make yourself templates for you to use. It's just so much easier just to kind of make yourself some cardstock templates. Then you don't have to do this every single time you assemble. All right, and then you'll see that now you'll have the little white edge all the way around and it fits, okay? So that's how I did it. That's my workaround. We're not done. We have another one to do. I'm going to show you how I did it too. All right, let's do this end. Something I want to show you because we learned this the hard way too. This looks like a square. It is not. It is four and a quarter by four, I think. So you want to pay attention to that. If you place it here, that is correct. See how it goes almost to your score lines? But if you turn it this way, it is not. I just want to caution you because we learned the hard way. All right, so here's what I'm doing on this. I'm going to place this where I want it on three sides. Typically, if you line it up at the top, that's what you're looking for, but I'm just going to move it just a little bit. So I've got this side right, this side right, and this side right. Now I'm going to take my pencil, okay, and I'm going to mark in where I would really want this to stop. And I'm going to have to make a mark I can really see because we're going to use those marks to our advantage. So now that I've made those marks, okay, I'm going to take it and slide it underneath, and I'm going to line this curve up to those marks. This is just the way I did it. It's, it may be a bad way. I don't know, but it's what I did. It's, it, it worked for what we were doing. Then I'm going to trace and cut that curve out. If you were thinking ahead, because I did not, I did not realize this was going to be a thing. You probably could cut this, this curve first and then cut your shape and get what you're looking for, you know, and measure it that way. But I didn't. So I wanted to show you in case you did what we did. All right, let's glue this down. So now we're gonna assemble the box and I've turned it upside down, okay? This is where I'm still following their instructions. That is, I'm taking these flaps, turning them in and adding some glue, just like this. So still doing exactly what they're telling me to do on the cover. And then I'm gonna take my box and I'm gonna use my work surface to help me square this up. You cannot use the tabs to help you square up and I will show you why. Remember their angle cut? Their angle cut so you can square up. Okay, so what you want to make sure you do is you make that square on your work surface and nice and clean like that. Don't worry about the flap. Just put it where it goes. Let's go ahead and do this one the same way. And then again, I'm going to use my work surface to square it up. And wherever that tab sits is where it gets glued down. So you can see just how square that is. And that's because I put it to the table. All right. Now, this is where I go off the rails. This is where I change. And let me show you. So here you can see that they're encouraging you to put adhesive here on these side flaps, and then they're telling you to fold them on the inside. Do you see that? Which is fine. Let me show you what I'm talking about. They're telling you to close these down. See, we've already decorated the front because I knew how I was gonna do it. And they want you to put those on the inside. I made a box and did that. We did a sample box, okay? But I did not love this piece. The reason I don't, is it makes it hard to close. It was weird, I don't know why. And also, I like to be able to put my paper on first before I get here. If I put that strip over once I'm here, I'm trying to have, I'm having to kind of do it on in the air like I talked about. So let me show you this. Now I wanna caution you about this too. You do it how you wanna do it. If you like this front piece going to the back, which I know is how a box should go, I've made enough boxes in my life to know that this is supposed to not have a seam where I'm putting it, then you do what they told you to do. I just liked how this one laid out better when I did it this way. It just looks cleaner and neater on the side, but again, it is paper crafting and you can totally do what you wanna do. I just like how that turns out without any kind of bump 
or lip right there. It's just really smooth. So I'm gonna do the other side the same way. And it's also best to put your glue on this side because this is the only place you want glue. You don't wanna put glue all the way up your flap because it doesn't go all the way up. All right, let's close that up. It's always good to stand it up and make sure you're good and square. And we are. This box is so cool when it's put together. I love it. All right, the flaps are all we have left. We're gonna do this little flap, add glue, put glue on that outside piece. This is gonna hide behind your decorative piece you did earlier. And remember, same thing, turn this up to your work surface to square it up. Don't try to square it up with the flap. You wanna square it up on the box because your flap has angle cuts here as well. I have warned y'all everything I can think to warn you. <laughs> like uh, a lot of you guys, you like whenever I make them ahead of time and kind of give you the warnings of what works and what doesn't. This is what we found works. And then look, now this little lid, you do have to kind of give it a little room, especially when you first close it, but look at that. Isn't that precious? Now we're going to show you some embellishments. Um, Here's one thing we did. We thought this was cute. So we took a border punch and we took a piece of cardstock that is an inch wide and four and a quarter long. So this is gonna live right here. We just wanted to dress it up just a little bit. And so I took this and put it into my border punch. And what I'm doing is matching it, not really matching it, but I'm lining it up to one line here and here. You can see they're not the same amount of lines. That doesn't really matter. I just want to start it on the same side here as I do the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that while I know where those marks were. That way, it'll all be one continuous border. All right, so I'm gonna punch this guy. Punch this guy, that sounds mean. I'm not being mean, I'm just gonna finish punching this out. And then the other side. So this guy is now cut and ready to glue down. So I'm just gonna add some glue back here to the back. And I'm just gonna glue him just about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half up from the bottom. And I wanna make sure he's pretty straight. Now I'm gonna bring Shannon in to show you the embellishment. You know why? Cause Shannon is real good at this. So now we're gonna move to Shannon. All right, hello guys. This is the flower punch that we used and we just have some of the coordinating um, botanical paper in this pretty pink and I'm just gonna punch one out. And I like to get this um, paper, if you can tell, is textured, and I like to do it with the texture up. And I curl my um, flower petals with my thumbnail just to loosen them up some, and it gives them a little curl. And we have done that like a thousand times. It's only two sets, right? It's two punches? Yes. Um, we For each one of the flowers that I did, we did two punches out of it. So you get two bigs. Let's see, two bigs, two of the next size. Then I did one and one. And then I'll just show you how I layered them up. And it just takes a little bitty dot. And then you're going to... Um, Go between, stagger them, that's the word I'm looking for. Go between every petal and lay one, and then just another dot. Now you sure could use your bone folder to curl the edges, we talked about that. You could even use your embossing stylus tool and a soft pad to kind of curl those if you wanted, but this is how she does it, and I wanted y'all to see it. This is her favorite way. And I did it like 15 times, it seems like. <laughs> Here's another one. And this one. And the last little guy. And then I just, once you get them all on, just give it a good squeeze. And then we used these pretty little gold. And another dot in the middle and then once I get it built up I just go back and lift some of the petals that's your flower and then to put it on the box just 
for a little bunch of glue. Get in the center. And there you go. There's your finished box. You guys, there they are. This is 108 cards. That's how many we were able to get total. Now, could I have gotten more? Yes, we have the wild card pieces that we talked about in part um, one. We also have all of our stickers that could keep going. You could make more using your stickers. Um, of course you could, but at some point you have to stop. We don't have any scraps of paper left, okay? Except for those little wild card pieces. Everything has been cut and used plus paper from our stash. So let's look, like this is one style that we did here. Isn't that cute? That's the easel style there. So we got 40 of those. They're laying here. This guy, we were able to get 28 of. I think it was 28 of these. And these are the ones that we did like this. And remember, we did the embossing on one side and they look like that. Isn't that adorable? These turned out really, really super cute. Let me just show you some. Like, look at that one. Isn't that beautiful with the little florally piece there that we embossed? Then we just did these together. We were able to get... 28 of these. Yes. So we got 28 of these guys. And then we ended up with four portrait five by seven. And we ended up with 12 landscape five by seven. So all of these guys, isn't that crazy how many we got out of there? So if you're needing lots of cards, the salutation sets are always great for that. Now for the boxes, we have six boxes. We're going to be dividing these cards up into six boxes, and we're going to be putting the envelopes in them uh, in there too. So if you would like to win one of these six boxes of cards, there is a um, link in the top of the description below. If you'll just open that description, it'll be to a raffle copter giveaway. We'll let it go a couple of weeks. The time and everything will be on the giveaway when you get there to let you know. Be sure to enter with an email that you check because that's how you find out if you won, especially these kinds of giveaways. We don't really do like a separate live to say who won these. We just email the person directly. So if you'd like to win one of these boxes, that's your way to do it. All right, guys, I think that's it. I think we did everything. I think we showed you everything we wanted to show you. Um, if you make these, you know what we want to see. We want to see it on our customer gallery at maymaymadeit.com. Now, we're pretty proud of this. This is, And I will tell you, I want to caution you about this too. This has been a three-day project at work. We worked nine to four. We've worked on this for three days. Not Well, it's, it's a quarter to three right now on the third day, okay? And we had me and Shannon working full-time on these, and then we had two helpers come in two different times. Brenda helped today. Sylvia helped yesterday. So I really want to tell you, if you're making this at home alone, this is going to take you a while. This is a big project. But if you're doing this with a group of friends, it will go a lot smoother, a lot faster. And then when you're done, Shannon said this, just divvy up the cards and you all end up with like 20, 25 cards a piece, maybe more. So pretty good little fun um, do with your friends project. Thanks so much for being a part of this. I know you guys love the As Many As series, and I hope this really uh, tickled your fancy on that as well, like the other ones that you love. And until next time, oh, almost forgot. Don't forget to subscribe. Y'all know I'm trying to reach 400,000 this year. So don't forget to hit that red subscribe button. Now, till next time, bye now.